Good evening, everybody. Today is January 31st, 2019. The first session of our series of six sessions in this uh, series on um, afterlife and reincarnation experiences. So we're going to be exploring this whole notion of the afterlife and, and we're going to get somewhat into reincarnation. I'd say mostly uh, afterlife reincarnation we kind of will have one session on reincarnation and it'll be woven in a little bit here and there through uh, th through several sessions but there gonna be one session primarily focused on reincarnation um, and of course uh, people want to bring up any topics as it relates to either of those very broad areas you bring up whatever you want in the context of this of this series that going to be we're, we're going to be working together on okay so it's very fluid it's very open ended in 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 it's very personalized i want to make sure that you feel like you feel like more comfortable and you feel like whatever questions that you have have been answered all right so um you'll see as the as for those new people who are with us uh, you'll see how how this goes it's a very informal discussion. I'm going to start out each of the sessions by giving about a 50, maybe 50 minute, 50, 55 minute talk about each of the subjects and I'm going to open up to questions. And this is the third time that I'm doing this uh, video conference, this live video conference series. Um, and it depends, you know, each session is different, every group is different, but we've had as much as, 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 much as an hour's worth of Q and A questions and answers and discussions in some of the, in some of the groups in some of the sessions, um, so um, it's really kind of tailored to you. I'm going to be speaking obviously on each of these topics that you've seen in the six part series, but um, I really want to make this as personalized as possible for you for each of you. Um, let's just talk about several logistical things, and I just want to teach uh, a couple of logistical points. On, on, on using GoToMeeting for those of you who have never been uh, used GoToMeeting before. There's a number of you who are new and there's a number of you who are sitting in on this, these, these, these classes, these sessions again, which I encourage you to do, by the way, because, you know, when you go to a seminar, you go to class, or you go to a workshop or whatever, you, even if you sit in again, you always get more out of it another time, even if the teacher is saying the same stuff over. Uh, it's, there's never, it's never really absolutely exactly the same, but even if it pretty much is, you're coming with a new mind, uh, at least from that perspective, from, as, the, as the listener, as the, 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 the person in the audience, your, your, your mind is slightly different. Uh, you've had different experience, life experiences, and you've had d processed things differently between one time you went to the class and the second time you went to the class. Uh, maybe even if, like I said, it was the same class. So I encourage you to sit, sit in it as much as you, as much as you like. And um, as you know, I'm gonna, I am recording right now. I'm recording uh, each of these sessions, and within 24 hours, you'll have. I'll send you an email with the link to the recording. And it takes a number of hours because it takes a while for it, you know to upload to YouTube and all that kind of technical stuff. But um, by tomorrow, sometime, you'll get the link. And you'll be able to watch it. And there's a uh, a number of people who were not able to join us live uh, this evening. Um, so there's probably I think there's around 25, 26 people in the group overall. And a lot of people are going to be watching it. Uh, some of the sessions, just the recordings, because of their work schedule, their personal, their family schedule, or whatever. Um, so don't worry if you miss a session. You will never miss it completely. You just miss the live. Uh, you know the live session, but you'll you'll get access to the recording. Um, another little logistical thing is, um, thanks for everybody muting their their their, their speakers while um, I mean the microphones uh, on your on your phones and um, and or laptops while while I'm talking. But when you want to uh, ask a question, feel free to unmute and ask the question either just verbally, or um, you can also type it in the chat box. For So those of you who, I think, looks like most of you 
are on your computer. So if you look on uh, in one of the boxes on your computer there, the go to meeting box, there's a there's a chat uh, option, and so it just says chat, and then you click on that, and then there's a drop down box there that says to all entire audience. That means that the entire audience is going to see your question, or you can click on the drop down, and you I think you'll see your name there, highlighted. Uh, or sp sp uh, you know spelled out and then highlighted in a different color I think it might be pink or red or something like that uh, you can click on that if you just want to make it private okay just private comment or private question between you and me I'm the only one who sees that so there's all these various privacy settings um, right now um, I, I think I'm, I may be the only one who's, who's using the vi uh, video uh, you will see me each time but again, whether you want to turn your video on is completely up to you. Uh, you can be private and so forth. There's no need for you to turn your video on. So those are just a few logistical things. Um, and if you have any questions on that, feel free to ask. Any questions on that, those logistical things first? Okay, our next session is going to be two weeks from tonight. Each of the sessions is going to be exactly at the same time. It's going to be 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern time uh, in, you know, all the various uh, uh, time zones around the world. Um, we may have some people on from Australia and different countries at, at, at different times um, and also in Europe. Um, so um, I'm, I'm, I'm on the East Coast right now. I happen to be on the East Coast. I'm traveling. Um, so one thing I want to mention is that I, I'm, I'm speaking at different places and I'm meeting with some clients at different uh, cities along the eastern seaboard and I'm headed up to Boston tomorrow and I'm going to be at Boston University School of Public Health for an event, a seminar on death and dying issues and um, I sent my book, so those of you who haven't seen my book, this is my book, Overcoming the Fear of Death, I sent a copy of the book my book to um, the speakers who are speaking at this conference and so I'm, I, I got invited, I was invited by the Dean of the School of Public Health at Boston University um, to a private reception at his house um, the evening before so I'll meet all the speakers and so forth. Um, there's a doctor from Brigham and, Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston, it's a very well-known uh, respected hospital. Uh, and a number of others uh, are, I'll be meeting there too, uh, a law school professor who teaches public, public health law, etc. Uh, I just say that to you just as an informational point, but also if you know anybody in your respective areas, wherever you are in the world, um, and, and if they're looking for somebody to come in and speak about uh, fear of death or dying issues in a non-religious way, please let me know and I'll if you can open up a door, great. If you just know of a place who might be open to, to such a thing, you can just shoot me uh, an email and let me know and I'll, I'll follow up on that. Um, as I'm doing more and more speaking out there to these various public groups, and, and, and especially in healthcare and education, and uh, I just spoke in, in Seattle, uh, you may know, a month ago to a, a group of trust in the states, uh, lawyers and accountants and so forth. All right, so that's kind of the over, overview logistical stuff. Let me just start our session uh, tonight by giving you a little kind of background on, on me. Because some of you, some of you know a lot about my background, and some of you know a little about my background. And I want to I want to spin the, my my background as it relates specifically to this six part series that we're going to be uh, engaging on together over the next. Um, the next 12 weeks together. Um, I've been having what most people would categorize as spiritual or psychic experiences well, my whole life. It started when I was two years old, actually. Um, and then it really ramped up a lot, again, in my 20s. Um, and as you guys know, many of you know, I learned to meditate when I was a teenager, and I shortly thereafter uh, learned to teach meditation. Um, I was taught by Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. Uh, those of you may know his name. Um, mainly the media knows his name because 
Um, he's famous for having taught the Beatles to meditate in 1967, introduced them and so forth. Uh, and then those of you who are old enough to know who Merv Griffin was, he had the, the biggest TV show um, in the United States and, then, and it was worldwide as well, the Merv Griffin talk show during the day. Um, well, Merv learned, uh, Burt Reynolds learned, Clint Eastwood learned uh, meditation as taught by Maharishi. It was called Transcendental Meditation, it still is. I was 10 years with that organization and I was an international leader in that organization, uh, teaching in Asia and throughout the United States and so forth. Uh, at West Point Military Academy, U.S. Army, U.S. Air Force in South Korea, half a dozen times up on the demilitarized zone between North and South Korea, which is big time, unfortunately, in the news these days. Because um, all the rattle, saber rattling that's going on. Um, but <clears throat> um, Maharishi was on the Merv Griffin show, and that just the whole teaching of meditation, that technique of meditation took off in the United States where 40,000 people a month were learning. Uh, it was just enormous numbers of people were learning and I was involved on the front lines of that teaching people. So I've taught thousands and thousands of people. I've taught f since 1973, uh, so 46 years now. So I have that in my background and you'll see how that relates to my opening up uh, from a, uh, an ability to communicate with minds on the other side of the veil, we call it sometimes, you know, or heaven or Valhalla or whatever you want to call that other side where people, uh, where, where people are when, after they die. And so my, my experiences are based, well, my, my, my knowledge is based on direct experience that I have had. So when you hear me speaking about things, it's because I have had those experiences, and if I have not had the experience, I'll tell you when I have not had it. But I think you pretty much can assume, and you can tell by the way I'll be talking about these various uh, issues and, and experiences and topics um, about the afterlife and reincarnation, uh, you, you, you'll, be, you'll be able to tell uh, you know, when uh, I'm talking about it from direct experience, which is going to be 99% of the time. Um, in the mid-70s, uh, mid-1970s, when I was in my mid-20s, I started remembering uh, past life memories, and they spontaneously started happening. We're going to get into that in great detail because we have a whole, whole session uh, together on reincarnation and past life memories and so forth. And I'm going to talk to you about how I view them and how I think they fit into our lives today because I'm all about living life today, in the present, as Kelvin Chin. I've also had many experiences talking with dead people I knew and dead people I didn't know and never knew. Um, I've also talked with minds, we'll call them, souls, spirits, whatever you want to call it. It's, it's synonymous as far as I'm concerned, those terms, on the other side, who've never been a, a a human person. So that's why I was wrestling with what do I call them. They're not dead people. They are living minds on the other side who've chosen to never incarnate in a human form. So um, we'll talk about that in the context of, 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 of the sessions as we go along through this. Okay? Um, so that's kind of a, just an overview of, of my background. And I've had a corporate and business career most of my, my life after I taught meditation for about 10 years uh, in my 20s and then I got into uh, working in corporate and law and so forth for decades. Throughout that period of time I continued to have these unfoldings of my spiritual um, being you could say, my mind opening up in this more spiritual, more abstract kind of way. Um, and. Um, or ability, a very concrete way, but the ability to experience uh, what most people would call very abstract experiences in a very, in a very tangible, palpable way. We'll get into what I mean by all those words in, in, in our discussions as we continue. But um, more recently, uh, in the last five, six years, I've started to do this work full-time. So I'm doing this full-time now, teaching meditation and doing these sorts of sessions with you and uh, my lecturing, and, and, uh, and, I'm, and I'm writing um, 
I'm well into uh, writing my um, next book right now. I have three other books in the works in various stages of completion. And uh, my next book, uh, after, after this one, this one is the uh, only one I have published out there. You can check it out on Amazon or wherever online. Uh, or you can go to my website and, 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 and go to a link there. But I have my, my next book, um, I'm about 14 hours into dictating my next book um, on my memoirs, which, in which I'm going to get into in great detail uh, some of the things that we're going to touch on, my personal experiences that we're going to touch on in the context of the six-part series that we got going on together. So let's get into the material of tonight uh, in a, uh, in a very uh, focused, deep way. What's the title? What happens when we die? All right. First of all, I want to make a statement about how I view all of these, all of these issues, topics, areas that uh, people talk about as it relates to afterlife um, after we die. My objective in everything that I do can be distilled down to basically three words. My objective is to demystify the mystical. So those three words, that's the concept that everything that I do has as its goal. What do I mean by that? What I mean by that is when you go to a lecture and somebody's talking about angels, those types of converse, or those types of workshops or seminars or lectures tend to tend to be couched in language that sounds really kind of far out and way out there. Um, when you hear about meditation, for example, um, and people talk about meditation experiences they may have, very often they are they are couched in language that makes it sound very distant. It's like only certain people can have those types of experiences and only after you've been meditating for many decades and so forth, that kind of thing. I take, a, I take an opposite approach to both meditation and any, anything self-development-wise that I do a, on a more spiritual level. I'm all about making it practical, here and now, accessible to anybody who wants to have access to any of these any of these openings, we could call them. So whether we're talking about angelic experiences, whether we're talking about uh, communicating with people who are dead, have, di have died and were here and then are now dead, loved ones or friends, um, it doesn't matter. My whole way of teaching is, is about demystifying that, taking the woo-woo out of it, so to speak, you know, and making it very down to earth because having had these experiences that I just kind of gave you a very quick, you know, overview, like a survey of my experiences a few minutes ago, having had so many of these thousands and thousands of these experiences over the last 40 years of my life, and if you really go back to the very first ones I had, uh, you know, when I was two years old, um, these, they're, they're very normal to me. It's not something far out. It's not something like really out there and like, you know, just, just, you know, far reaching or distant or something that's only for special people. That's what I am uh, teaching contrary to. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So when I, that's what I mean when I say demystifying the mystical. All right. And as I've already said, my approach is, is to, is to think about these things, what I've implied to you, and I'll be very explicit, is to think about all of these things, these abstract concepts, in as rational a way as possible. Um, backed up, as I, I said earlier, by direct experience. Now, I have direct experience that I'm speaking from. You may or may not have direct experience uh, in, in all of these various areas that we're going to be talking about over the next 12 weeks together. But that does not matter. What I encourage you to do is take the information that I'm sharing with you, park it, and just consider them as what I call data points. They're points of information. They're points of data for you. I'm not saying that you should believe everything that I say even. 
I'm saying take it as data points and then use your rational mind, your regular, normal, everyday, common sense, rational mind, and think about how I'm saying things and does it make sense? Because that's my goal is to try to s explain things to you and say things to you in a way that does make sense. And I want you to call me on it, <laughs> call me out on it, I'm serious. I want you to call me out on whatever I say in any of these lectures if it does not make sense to you. And if it doesn't make sense to you, please, I implore you, I beg you to ask me in the Q&A. And if you're embarrassed, just type it in the private chat room box, like I said, if you don't want to say it publicly. But, you know, we're all friends here. Nobody, this is a safe space. Nobody's going to be critical of anybody for asking any question, uh, whatever it may be. And so, um, because I, not only do I want you to think and use your common sense in your rational mind in trying to think these things through in a way that's not normally thought through in most workshops out there on these various topics. I want you to do that. Why? Because it's going to help you understand it better, especially if you haven't had any experiences, especially if you hadn't had, haven't not had the experiences in the area. All right. But the other reason is a selfish reason, quite frankly, or a self-interested reason. It's in my self-interest for you to ask me questions when I am not crystal clear to you in how I explained it. Because what does that do? It helps me become a better teacher. And I am all about becoming the best teacher I can be. And you're, you're, you're part of that, uh, you're part of that, that, that you're my audience in terms of helping me do that. You're an integral part of that. Okay. So um, let's get into after we die. There, I want to make four general statements to you, and we'll get into the details of this as we go along. But four general statements. Number one, about after we die. And by the way, when I say after we die, what I'm talking about, obviously, just to be very crystal clear, uh, after we physically die. After our physical body shuts off and is dead. Okay? Four general statements. One is, there is less difference between here and there than we think. So, here meaning earth, and there meaning heaven. Let's just call it heaven. There may be different other words that, depending on what culture you may be from, or religion, or so forth, background, but you know what I mean. So, the afterlife. Less difference between earth and the afterlife, or heaven, than we think. Number one, point number one. General statement number two. The there is not that far away. It's actually right here with us, but it's unseen by us. That's the second point. Okay, third point. Yes, no dense physical bodies on the other side. Here, obviously, dense physical bodies, physical things like books, paper, physical things, pens, physical hard objects, dense physical bodies on this side. Yes. Fourth point, yes, the mind continues, okay, after we die. So this has been an experience, a memory that I've had, and also um, I've had many experiences, as I've already said, talking with people who, who have died. Um, soon after they've died, and some people many, many years and decades after they've died. Um, so um, those four points. Basic general statements. Less difference between here and there than we think. The there is not so far away. It's just unseen by us. Yes, no dense physical body on the other side. And yes, the mind continues after we physically die. But what else can we say? So let's talk about this from a, from a science standpoint initially. And again, what did I say earlier? Looking at this from a rational standpoint. So... There's a basic theory in um, uh, thermodynamics, in, 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 in physics. Uh, there's an underlying principle that, that I want to talk about, and that's the, the first law of thermodynamics. So what's the first law? Basically, it can, it can be distilled down to this. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. 
It's the principle of conservation of energy. Maybe some of you remember that from your science class uh, when, you were, when you were in high school or college. Um, so what does that mean? The mind, again, when I say mind, by the way, I'm talking about, you can use different words for the same uh, word I'm using, mind. Soul, spirit, consciousness, awareness. All of those are the same thing as far as I'm concerned. I tend to like to use words that are not religiously or culturally loaded. Um, they're, they're not preferring one religion over another, or one culture over another, or creating any dispute amongst people about what that means. So I tend to try to use more neutral words, so that's why I say mind. But when I say mind, I mean like huge mind, not just the mind that's Kelvin Chin that's talking in the room right now, who's... Um, giving a lecture and focusing on what he's going to say. Yes, that's part of my mind, but that's just a small part of my mind. So, I mean mind in, the, in, in that way and the huge way at the same time when you hear me say mind. So the mind is what? Our mind is energy, right? If it continues after the body dies, obviously it's not physically continuing, it's energetically continuing, you could say, figuratively speaking, right? And so uh, the whole idea that energy cannot be created or destroyed, first law of thermodynamics, would make sense, right? So rationally, using our common sense, our logical mind, it would logically make sense that something would continue after the physical body died, right? So let's say I die and I get cremated. Okay, well the body energy is going to consist of what? It's going to be. It's going to consist of the ashes, and the 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 uh, the bone becomes ashes. The flesh burns and so forth. Well, where does it go? It turns into heat. Well, that's energy, right? And so, if you captured all of that, you have a certain amount of energy, and there and 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 in addition to that, you have the mental energy that's continuing after that physical body is completely gone. All right? So, um, what, what continues then um, after we physically die? Is there an identifiable, so let me define what I mean by that, is there an identifiable an individuality in other words, do you still know who you are? Okay? In layman's language, do, does Harpo still know who Harpo is after he dies? In the same way, analogously, when you go to sleep at night and you wake up the next morning, do you have an identity crisis? <laughs> you know? Do I wake up in the morning and I go, uh... I can't remember who I am. Why am I in this hotel room? What am I doing here? No, we don't have an identity crisis. Something is continuing there, right? After we wake up, after a night's sleep, after a night of dreaming for that matter, having been on horseback or riding on airplanes and who knows what, but not in the hotel room here where I physically am. My mind has been off elsewhere, but there's a continuation element as well, right? And so what about the body after the physical body dies, is there something that continues after in the afterlife that's not purely just the mental individuality that I just described, that continuation, that knowingness of who you are? Oh yeah, I'm still Harpo. Now I'm dead, but you know, I'm on, my physical body died, but now I'm still alive, I'm, except I don't have a physical body. But you still have what I call, and this has been my experience, um, I've seen this many, many times in uh, people who've, who've died, there's still an identifiable energy pattern. That's the phrase that I came up with. Maybe somebody else has used it before, but that's the phrase that I tend to use. An identifiable energy pattern. So it's recognizable that, like, if Harpo and I died and... Uh, Harpo's on the other side, I'm on the other side in the afterlife. We see each other. 
Harpo would recognize my energy pattern, even though I don't physically look like what you see on your, your screen right now. Kelvin chin, shaved head, got a sweater on. And, and, and Harpo doesn't look like he does either uh, on the other side, typically. He doesn't have to look like that. And you'll see what I mean by that phrase, those of you who are carefully listening to my, to my, to my, uh, my, my verb choices. Um, I'll explain that later. But there's an, an, an energy pattern that's something that's recognizable. I recognize something about him. Um, even though, you know, he doesn't have the name Harpo on the other side, etc., etc., etc. It's kind of like, you know what it's analogous to? How many of you have had the experience on this side where you meet somebody you've never met before in this lifetime. Let's say John meets somebody in this lifetime on planet Earth he's never met before that he knows of on the, in this lifetime and he meets him and he go, God, there's this familiarity there. I don't know what it is. You know, I met this person and we just clicked and we just hit it off and it's almost like we're just finishing each other's sentences and we just met. How did that happen? That's a great example. I mean, many of you have had that experience, I'm sure, in your lives. Here now, this lifetime. And that's a great example of what I'm talking about. There's a recognition of the energy pattern is the way I describe that. There's something about the connection between you and the other person that you recognize. And it's difficult to, it's impossible to articulate. I'm sure you've been through this yourself. Those of you who've had the experience, you go, how do I explain this? You know, it's like inexplicable, right? But that's how, those are the words that I use. It's like this energy pattern. There's something about that person. There's a soul, people use phrases like, there's a soul connection. Yeah, there's a mental, spirit-oriented spirit soul connection, whatever you want to call it. I call it an, 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 an identifiable, energy, identifiable energy pattern in that other person. You, you just can't explain it, right? Same thing after you physically die. If your mind continues, it's that same recognizable uh, pattern type of thing, analogous to what I just described. Um, I'll give you a, a couple examples. I've, I've been visited by Maharishi. Maharishi died in 2008. I've been, I've, I've been visited by him. Well, first I was visited by him in 1988, I think. 1987, 88, somewhere around there. He visited me in a dream. And I knew it was him. It was a lucid dream. Uh, and I'm giving you a couple of different examples for teaching purposes to show that people can come to you in very, in different, in different states of con, in, when you're in different states of consciousness. I was dreaming then. Another time, uh, he, he's come to me during my meditation, which is a different state of consciousness. It's not waking, dreaming, or sleeping, as those of you who meditate know. Um, and he's also come to me in waking state. Um, and it's a recognizable energy pattern. Now, first time he came to me. He showed me a physical form of himself that I recognized his face. It was kind of like an energy, vibrational energy form, vibrating energy kind of, but visual I could see. And then, but then after that, I recognized his energy, his energy form, um, um, when he would come, come and come and visit, uh, and talk with me. Same thing uh, in my book. Uh, those of you who read my book. There's a, there's a number of different stories in there by a game, about a guy named Jimmy, who was a um, Vietnam War uh, vet and a Cobra attack helicopter pilot in Vietnam. Um, I, and I was fortunate to be there at Jimmy's death before and, 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 and at his death, uh, at his bedside, literally, when he died, um, when he took his last breath, literally. And then he's, he's visited me uh, a number of times after he died. Um, so recognizable energy pattern is all I, all I can tell you. And, um, and even some people have visited me who I don't know, never met them. Uh, a brother of a friend of mine, for example. Um, 
and he came and talked to me and he told me some things and I'll get into the details of that but those of you who have read the book you know what I, it's the it's the in my book it's the no smoking in heaven section I'll get in and talk about that when we get to the you know that that session in a you know I think it's session four or something like that down the road uh, in our series here. Um, but again, recognizable energy pattern, not that I recognized it in him, but uh, he gave me some recognizable um, pointers that I shared with his sister to make his pattern identifiable to her. So he knew that whatever he was telling me uh, was coming from him. Um, what else? Other myths I want to kind of dispel about when we die. There's this myth that exists out there that after we die, we merge into some cosmic soup of some, some, of some sort, like a soup or a stew or some like mix of some cosmic ocean or something. That, that's, not, that's not been my experience and it's not been the experience of, 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 of the many, 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 many many, many people I've talked with after they've died and who are still there on the other side. Um, merging into a, some cosmic soup would, would imply, would mean that one would lose one's individuality, one's identifiability. Um, and I've already told you that the identity c continues to exist, um, so that would make no sense. And, um, um, and, and what also that implies, if there's individuality on the other side in the afterlife, that implies that time exists on the other side. Because let's talk for a quick second about time. What's time? Time is a measurement of change. Um, that's what time is, and it's the actual specifics of time are arbitrary. Humans made it up, right? The fact that there's seven days in a week there could be six days in a week. You know, we, we, the humans made that up as a, a, you know, agreed, okay, there's going to be seven days in a week. Um, so that there could be some organization of, of, of this concept of change that we, we all experience in the world. Um, you know, 12 months in a year. Back in Roman times, there were 10 months in a year. So, so that's completely arbitrary, made up by humans. So, so time is a measurement of change. The specifics of time are made up by us, by, by us humans. Um, but I want to talk a little bit about time here on planet Earth and time on the other side. Is the experience of time, keep, hear what I said, the experience of time here on planet Earth the same as the experience of time on the other side? And my experience is that it's not the same. That in fact, time seems to go much well, seems to go, well, it depends on, uh, yeah, I'm wrestling with this because it depends if you're talking about from this side or you're talking about from the other side because it's relative, right? So depending on uh, which, you know, who, which, you know, whose side you're talking about, the earth side or the afterlife side, the experience of time is faster or slower. It's a lot faster or a lot slower. Let me give you some specifics. So um, let's just say, there's a difference in speed here on Earth versus there as measured by what? As measured by, let's say, um, speed of light. So let's, because that, I, I use speed of light as an example, why? Uh, as a metric, why? Because uh, it's something we can talk about, we know what the speed of light is, and it's really fast. Okay, so, so it's not something that I'm making up. So let's just talk about the speed of light. Let's operate under the assumption, because I don't know, um, I don't know if, uh, the exact speed of things on the other side, but let's say that, that, that if your energy, back to the, what, what, what our understanding, our logical understanding is, the body dies, the mind continues, the mind is energy. So we're energy on the other side, right? So um, light is a form of energy. So that's why I want to use light as a metric, as a measurement tool here, to measure things, hypothetically speaking, on the other side. Okay, I say hypothetically speaking because I don't know exactly what the speed of things are. But let's just use the speed of light as a, as, as, as a, uh, as a common yardstick. Okay, well the speed of light 
is really, really, really fast, right? And so um, let's say, uh, well, how fast is it? Let me just, I, I Wikipedia this. Let me read this to you. So the speed of light in miles per hour is 670 million, 616,629 miles per hour. So it is almost 700 million almost 700 million miles per hour. That's how fast the speed of light is. It's crazy fast, right? And so if you could travel at the speed of light on planet Earth, you could go around the Earth seven and a half times in one second. All right? So I'll say that in a different way. Um, so in one-eighth of a second, one-eighth of a second, you could travel around the Earth. The whole circumference of the Earth, which is what? It's 24,000 miles, right? In one-eighth of a second. That's incredibly crazy fast, right? All right. So let's say that you can travel at the speed of light after you die because you're energy. You're basically a light form, but you have your individuality still at the same time. So you have this unusual mix of things. You're energy, but you're not merged into some cosmic energy soup you know, you still retain your, your, your individuality. And that's my, been my experience, I've told you, with many, many, many people who've, who, who've communicated with me who are dead and their energy forms on the other side, and I've seen some of them. Um, so let me give you an example of, of uh, and I'll debunk another myth that people have out there. So you'll, you'll sometimes see this in Fear of Death websites, and we're Fear of Death, Faith, Fear of Death, wait, wait, uh, or Near Death Experience, uh, and afterlife, there's all these different, there's dozens and dozens and dozens of them, uh, Facebook groups out there and, and websites. There's a myth out there that you can be in more than one place at one time because psychics will have the experience here on planet Earth that where, where they'll get visitations from somebody and somebody may get a visitation from that same person, let's say, across the planet Earth, on the other side of the planet or something. Let me give you an example. So, and, and, this is, and this is, I think, how the, that myth, that misunderstanding arises. Let's say that I die, and let's say that my son is acting, my son is an actor, uh, he's acting up in San Francisco. And let's say my daughter, who's a dancer, is performing in New York City. They're here on planet Earth, they're still alive in their physical bodies. I'm dead, I'm not in my physical body, I'm this light light being now, will call me, and uh, still retaining my individuality, and I want to communicate with my kids. So I, con I, I, I contact my kids from the other side. I contact my son first. And then very quickly, because I can travel, let's say, at the speed of light, and I already told you, I can travel around the earth in one-eighth of a second. If I can go 24,000 miles in one-eighth of a second, see how much faster I can just go 3,000 miles, uh, over to, to communicate with my daughter, how fast that is, and I'm communicating with her, they, they immediately call each other, and they say, Dad, just talk to me. No, 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 Dad, just talk to me. No, no, he talked to me. So then, thus is born the myth, among psychics and other people who had this experience, that you can be more than one place on the other side. Okay? No, it's just a matter of speed. And you're traveling so incredibly fast, but if there is uh, time on the other side, which I said there is, except the experience of time is different, right? Um, and you have individuality, then you have change, right? You can't have one without the other. Then that means that you cannot be in the same place in two, I mean, in two different places at the same time, okay? So, um, and the experience of time, by the way, as I said earlier, is just different on the other side. It's kind of like, you know, you go on vacation and you have vacation mode time. You, on this side, you go on, uh, on Earth, you go to a vacation, and it's like, oh, I don't know, what are we going to do? Let's have a pina colada. Let's just chill out at the beach. Ah, oh, what am I going to do? I don't know what I'm going to do. And you just, you know, you just don't pay attention to this. This thing right here, right? This watch, your clock. You're not paying attention to time, and you kind of go into a timelessness state of mind when you're on vacation, right? You've all experienced that. Well, 
The other side is a, to, is, a, is a place of vacation, and we're going to get into that in, in some detail um, uh, in, in one of our sessions. But experience of time is different. What about this idea of tunnels of light? Okay, I want to talk about this in this context of what we're talking about today, what happens when we die. People think, oh, you go into this tunnel of light. You know, Eben Alexander, those of you who know who he is, maybe you heard him speak. He's on YouTube, this and that. I've met him. We've exchanged books. I gave him a couple of my book, chatted with him uh, before one of his lectures. He, he, he's written this uh, book um, um, uh, about heaven. When, and when he had a near-death experience and died for, I think, a week or something like that. And he was giving a tour of heaven by some angelic female. He described her as an, an angel and so forth. Um, first of all, before I get into the tunnels of light, let me make a quick comment on that. He's interpreting, just like everybody else who's had a near-death experience and come back and told people about their near-death near -death experience, everybody interprets it through their own filter, their own belief system. So he was a very devout Christian uh, from North Carolina, very Christian uh, community he was in, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, a neurosurgeon, scientist, but very Christian. Well, what do you think he's going to filter and see things through? The first person he sees who has a, who has a body of light, he's going he's gonna, to he's gonna assume that's an angel because in Christianity, angels have bodies of light. Okay, Back to this whole tunnel of light thing, he experienced the tunnel of light. I've talked to many people who had near-death experiences who have never had an experience of tunnel of light. So some people will, some people won't. And it's just a different, a different type of experience. Uh, not everybody has the same experiences after they die. Um, so there's not some structural thing called the tunnel of light that everybody goes through. If you hear people saying that, eh, your red flag should go up. That's somebody who's looking for blind faith followers. And it's not accurate. Here's where I think some of the confusion comes in. Um, back to what I've said. When we die, we're energy form. Energy is continuing. Okay. We're, that means we're energy forms. We're, 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 we're um, beings of light, you could say. Bright light. Well, when you die physically, typically you are greeted by many beings of light. What does that look like? A big light. <laughs> That's what that looks like. Like a lot of light. And if there are dozens and dozens of them, that's a lot of light. If there's hundreds of them, that's a huge amount of light. Right? So there's, that's one source of the light, light source, is the individuals themselves. Another source of the light on the other side is the structure itself of the afterlife is more energetic. I'm using that term kind of sort of figuratively speaking, but you think about it as light energy. It's more energetic than this watch is. This watch is a physical hard object. It's metal, right? So, so when you have that more energetic type of existence, everything is light. So if you're not used to that, and you come from this place we call planet Earth, where, yeah, okay, I got a light on here, it's dark, you know, it's, it's nighttime here, uh, and, and eventually the, the sun will come out, and if the sun's out in a bright way, it's bright and so forth. So yeah, okay, I'm not saying it's pitch black here, but relative, relative to the other side, it's dark here, because these things, these objects, are absorbers of light. Right? They absorb light. Um, you know, those of you who remember your, uh, your basic uh, color science when you were growing up in elementary school, I don't know if they ever told you that. The art teacher told you that, you know, the, um, you know, the, the, uh, the color black, and I, I don't want to show it to you right now, but the table that the, your, my laptop is sitting on here, the wooden table in the hotel room, is black. Well, black is, is a... Uh, is an absence, it's an absence of, 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 of light, really. And so everything, different colors, the darker the colors, the more absence of light. So we live in a world that has various degrees, in a sense, of absence of light. Compared to afterlife, you go there and you go like, oh my God, who turned the light switch on, you know? Because it's not an absence of light, it's a 
preponderance. It's like an, an amazing uh, area full of light. So I think those are a couple of several different reasons why people have this notion that you always go through this tunnel of light, but you don't always do that. And I've had, uh, well, I have had first-hand experience talking with many people who just find themselves on the other side without going through a tunnel sometimes. And then sometimes people do go through a tunnel. So it varies, okay? People's experiences are different. It doesn't mean that, and even Eben Alexander, to his credit, used this example um, in the lecture that I, that I saw him talk at. Um, he, he, he used the example of, uh, uh, that I've often used as well, which is you go to a city, let's say you go to New York City and you've never been to New York City before. Well, there's a certain structure to New York City. Big, tall buildings, lots of cement, lot, you know, not a lot of trees. <laughs> and, uh, but, so there's a structure to it, all right? That's, that, that, that objectively, everybody would gen generally agree on. But if you, if you send 12 people to New York City, they'll come back and they'll give you different, 12 different descriptions of New York City, right? Same thing with going to the afterlife. There are 12 people who have NDEs, near-death experiences, which we're going to get into in much greater detail what those are. We're going to have a whole session on those. Um, you know, you're going to get 12 different versions of what the afterlife is. So don't be fooled by that when people say, no, this is the way it is. Red flag, okay? Start to you know, question, you want to question... Where that per what that person's agenda is, okay? What about what about being greeted by old friends and loved ones at the moment of death? Well, I've talked about this a little bit already. Very common, but here's one point that I want to want to plant uh, 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 one point that I want to uh, uh, mention and a seed that I want to plant in your head about this. Don't be surprised when you die that you are greeted not only by your dead grandmother from this lifetime and your mother and your brother and who else, who, all your friends and loved ones, in other words, who have predeceased you from this lifetime. But don't be surprised if you're, if, you're, if you're greeted when you are greeted by all kinds of other friends in lifetimes who you were not with this lifetime. That's why the group can be so big the, the, we'll call it the, the, welcome, the, the, the welcome mat group, you know, can be so big on the other side. Because whether you're consciously aware of it now, you will be reminded of it after you physically die when you see all of these identifiable energy beings, your old friends in other words, from 150 years ago, from 500 years ago, 1,000 years ago, and you'll recognize them instantly. They already recognize you. They're looking forward to you coming and greeting you. So don't be surprised if that happens. Okay? Um, I'll get into this in much greater detail. Uh, I th think it's the fifth session where we talk about friends and, um, uh, and greeting us on the other side. Um, what about the idea of fear? Does that continue or discontinue when we physically die? Well, a lot of our fears will dissipate and some of them will go away, especially the fears that are related to our physicality because we do not have a physical body in this way. This Kelvin Chin physical body here is not going to exist on the other side. So those types of fears will go away. If you have other fears that are, uh, that are um, less physically uh, connected and are just more more purely emotional mentally related then you take those with you generally speaking and so why do I say that to you I say it to you number one because it's true and number two um, you're not going to escape from it by just dying um, and, 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 and the third reason the most important reason I say this to you is to encourage you to work with whoever you can, whomever you can, whether it's me or anybody else, somebody, to help get over your fears now. Because I want you to live your life more fully in the present now, as you've heard me say many, many times. Um, and, and that includes 
on the other side in the afterlife, right? So I am, if, in effect, I am preparing in, through all of my work, whether it's teaching meditation or doing my overcoming the fear of death work or doing these afterlife uh, sessions with people, all of the work that I do, essentially, I don't always say this publicly, but I am preparing people for that most intimate moment when they die, most intimate moment because you are with yourself, you are alone with yourself at that actual split second when your physical body dies and you go to the other side, I want you to be as fear-free as possible. As fear-free as possible. May not be possible for all of us to be without any fear, but if I can do whatever I can to help you reduce your fears about death and dying, at that moment when you die and you are freer, freer from fear, you will, you will have a much, uh, you will have a, an incredibly enjoyable vacation on the other side. And that's what essentially a lot of the work that I'm doing is, is, is all aimed at. Okay. Um, so, and what do you, what do you end up doing on the other side? Let me just kind of cover this. I'm just going to end in like another minute or so. Um, and, and open it up to questions. So start thinking about questions you want to ask or if you want to start typing them in. Oh, I already got some questions here. Great. Um, uh, good. Keep writing questions. Type them in or you can, you, people can ask me uh, if you want. Um, all right. So, so what do you do? You can basically do what you want. Like I said, it's vacation time on the other side. Can you go to the beach? Yeah. You want to create a beach? You mentally, you create a beach. You want to go hike up in the mountains? Yes, you can go hike, 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 hiking up in the mountains. Um, you know, it's, uh, uh, it, it's pretty much anything goes. You want, but, it's, but it's all about trying to create as much uh, peaceful place for you to relax as possible. That's the idea of our friends my friends on the other side, and I'll get into detail, I'll name names uh, in a later session, um, who they are. Uh, my friends on the other side, we are jointly working together. I'll say it to you this way. I'm working on this side, they're working on the other side to reduce fear as much as possible, and they're creating as much a vacation, uh, a vacation land, <laughs> kind of uh, environment in heaven as possible for, for all of us humans when we physically die, humans or other beings on other planets in physical form uh, when they die. And I'm doing my part, jointly working along, alongside with them actually, in this project that we call the Overcoming the Fear of Death Project. Um, and uh, I'm working obviously on this side. So... Um, uh, but who creates those different scenarios, the going to the beach, climbing a mountain on the other side or whatever? We do. Like I said, our minds are much more powerful than we realize. And when we die, our mind is who we are. And we don't have the physical body anymore. And we can create whatever, you know? And we can co-create with our friends who we run into on the other side. I ran into Harpo on the other side and Harpo say, you know, we both use, well, he's a musician still. I, I, I used to be. And we may say, hey, let's go, let's go form a band and just rock out or whatever. We can go do that. I mean, it's just like, boom, you just kind of manifest these things because your mind is so powerful now, but even more powerful there because our mind is not distracted like it is here. And it's, our mental energy is not used up so much absorb so much by trying to maintain our physical body. It uses up a lot of energy maintaining our physical body. So, um, mental energy. Um, so what's the bottom line? Bottom line is chill out, as I've said, relax on the other side. Um, that's, what, that's what it's all about. Enjoy not having the pressures of being in a dense physical body and with all the responsibilities that come along with it. Feeding it, keeping it healthy, going to a job, making money so you can get food and have a roof over your head and all of this, all of that stuff. It's time after we die is a time for us to rejuvenate ourselves. Okay? All right. So good. So let's open up to questions. I already got some here. 
Somebody asked, um, are there both good and bad patterns to recognize? So I'm not sure what you mean by that. So if you could ask me a little bit more detail on that. Do you mean on the other side, good and bad patterns? Can you hear me? Say again. Can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Yes, perfect. Go ahead. Hey, Mary, hey. Um, you were talking about you re-encounter energies that you've known throughout lives. Mm. And you were mainly speaking, it seemed, in terms of good energies or energies you recognized. So I was wondering if this realm goes over to a, a bad energy that you recognize. Yes. So here's the thing. So the short answer is yes. And the, and the good news is you can leave that bad. Well, let's, let's, just, let's just talk about it as people, okay? Because I, I like to, like I'm demystifying this. And I think there's, as I said early on, one of those principles I said early on is more, more similarity to this side than that, that side. Then people which realize. Which is one of the reasons, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> right? Saying, uh, so, which is yeah. one of the reasons why you're logically asking that question, right? And, and which, is yeah. a, which is a great question. I'm glad you asked that, Susan. So, here's the thing. The short answer is yes. Um, we can run into people we'd, we'd rather not run into on the other side. Um, the, the good news is, is that we can just leave them in the dust uh, in, a, in a heartbeat because mentally you don't have a physical body. So you don't have, it's like here, you want to like, ah, I don't want to be with you. I got to go. I got to go. I got to get in a car, get in a cab. I got to, you know, get in an airplane or whatever. Fly away, or you don't need that on the other side. You just decide, you just decide. I, I'm out of here, you know. Boom, and you're like on the other side of the universe or something with your friends. So, so yes, you could run into anybody on the other side, but your thoughts and your desires are, I would say, let me put it to you this way: they're more easily manifested over there. So you can. Say see you later. I, I I hang in with you, and then boom, you're not there. You're not you're not there with them. You're you're the, you're there, but you're somewhere else. You understand? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, that's a good question. So so um, don't worry. <laughs> <I'll>, <laughs> yeah. Be happy. Okay. Yeah, don't yeah, don't worry, be happy. But but you know. But seriously, can you run into? Yeah, absolutely. You know, you run into anybody. How easy or difficult? Is it for a person on the other side to release fear and guilt? So, it's, if you have fear and guilt on the other side, is it any easier or not as easy? Well, like I said, again, think about it this way. Think about it this way, Shannon. It's like, on this side, um, we have something, this physical body, that, that, that restricts us. It causes us, well, we got to pay attention to it. We got to eat and so forth. And, and, if, and, if, and if the blood sugar level, I'll just use a specific example, like the blood sugar level is not where it should be. Our chemistry isn't where it should be. Then um, we can be hypersensitive to certain, uh, cer certain emotional uh, emotions uh, more than we normally would be than if we weren't starving, let's say, okay? So I use that as an example to give you, to show that yes, if it's related to that type of thing, it's easier to release fear and or guilt or anything on the other side when it relates to not having a physical body, if that makes sense. There's a lot of different negatives in, in there, but... Uh, Hopefully that logically makes sense to you. In other words, um, let me say it a different way. If it's just a purely emotional thing and you are still a mind on the other side, just like you're a mind on this side, and the dissipation or the intensity of that emotion is, is not impacted by your physicality, then it's going to be just as difficult to get rid of that fear on the other side. Does that make sense? It's not going to be any easier. Now, that's just purely from looking at you as a single entity. But you have friends on the other side. And so you could say that it may be easier and less difficult, therefore, 
for you to release your fears and guilt on the other side. Why? Because you have this army of friends and loved ones on the other side who kind of been there, done that. They're over there. They're not... They are familiar. Some of them have been there for a long time. They'll visit, they'll, they'll greet you when you die. And those are like your, your major mentors, we'll just call them, right? And they'll say, dude, you know, come over here. I got to fill you in. This is what it's like over here. Because you're new there and you don't remember what it was like there. You've been there before, I'm sure, but you forget. We all forget, you know? We get absorbed in this place on earth. You know, it's like, oh, I forget. I don't remember before birth. So they've been there. That, that makes it easier, okay, uh, from that standpoint. So I'd say, yes, easier, yes, uh, less difficult, more easy, easier to release fear and guilt on the other side from a social standpoint because you got so many friends helping you saying, hey, dude. All right, I'll give you a specific example. Um, when Maharishi died, he thought he was going to merge with the cosmic soup. In Vedic uh, tradition, those of you who have studied anything Indian, uh, you know, Vedic uh, uh, meditation, Vedic tradition, um, which goes back many, many, many hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands of years, um, uh, depending on which guru, which seer you're talking about, thousands of years. But that belief system of enlightenment is defined as merging with the absolute. They, they, can, they call this world the relative, and they call inside yourself or inside at the, at, you know, at the base of all creation, they say, is the absolute. Now, that's their belief system. It's not my belief system. Uh, and we'll, we can talk about this in another session. But um, when he died, he thought he was going to, that he was enlightened and he would merge with, and, and he loses individuality, in other words. When I say merge, um, they, they mean by that, lose your individuality, okay? And so he was just sitting there, basically. And the way I describe it, sitting there on the other side, like, I'm still wide awake and I'm still me. You know that experience I jokingly said about Harpo waking up in the morning wondering who he was? You know, you know, we don't have that experience. We wake up, we know who we are. Harpo knows who he is when he wakes up. You know, well, Marishi died in a sense and woke up on the other side and he still knew who he was. He thought he was not going to know who he was. He thought he was going to lose his individuality. Well, um, back to Shanna's question of how easy or difficult it is to release your fears and guilts about these things. Um, analogously, Maharishi um, got educated by his friends and a number of his friends, his teacher, who predeceased him, died in 1953, I think. 1953, his teacher died. And, and his teacher's teacher and other teachers uh, of, of that uh, lineage, that, that tradition of teaching, the Vedic tradition, that went back many thousands of years, a lot of them were there. And they all said, hey, dude, this is Kelvin Chin's, like, you know, you, you guys, a lot of you guys know me, how informal I am. So it's like, hey, dude, come over here. They, they probably said something a little bit different from that. But, you know, hey, dude, come over here. We got to talk to you. And they come over to the proverbial card table in heaven. You know, the guys are all sitting there. These Vedic guys, I don't know, playing cards or playing some Vedic game. I don't know. Is there a Vedic game? I don't know. But anyway, they're playing cards at the card table. And they're like, hey, dude, come over here. We got to talk to you. And they start sharing notes. And they started, there was an education process. So my point of saying this to you, Shanna and everybody, is that, there's this social network over there. You talk about social media. You talk about social networking. They got this huge social network over there, and these are your old friends, and they're cluing you in. And they've been hanging out there, some of them, for thousands of years. You know? So they know the turf. They know what's going on, and they're sharing their notes with you. So this is like somebody showing you the answers to the test, basically. So if your fears, Shanna, are related to that kind of stuff, where somebody can show you, oh, no, 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 look at this. I want to show you something. Boom, your fear go can go away, okay? Depends what your fear is. Does that help? Other questions? Anything else? That's a great question, though. Great question. Great question. Great question. I don't really have a question right now, but uh, yeah. 
I wanted to say this. I had a fear of... Uh, Can you turn down your speaker? Yeah, your... I'm going to do that right now. Yeah. That way we won't get the feedback, the echo. Okay. Okay, now, okay, we're... So now we're good. I did have a fear for quite a while of going to the other side and running into somebody I didn't want to see again. But then I found out something about that person and now I'm not afraid to see him anymore because I forgive him for all he did. <laughs> I just didn't know what I I didn't know what his life was all about even though I knew him well forever. And so I, I thank you on that. I I'm not afraid of that. That was the only thing I think that I was afraid of on the other side. That's interesting, Harpo. That's very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So so that's great. And then, you know, so now you can see him if you want to. If you want to, you can see him. So that's the thing. Um, you can w want to see him or not want to see him. If you run into him and you don't want to see him, you can, like I said earlier, in a split second, you'll be elsewhere. But now that you don't have this fear because you know a little bit more about him, you may be able to have a conversation with him on the other side that, you know, resolves things even further, you know? You learn a bit, yeah. learn even more about each other. Because here's the thing, he probably knows a lot more about himself now that he doesn't have a physical body and he's just a mind. He may, he might, he might have memories of other lifetimes, uh, he might, he may not, but he might have memories of other lifetimes because somebody like Maharishi's teacher showed Maharishi's other lifetimes to him that Maharishi was unaware of. Maharishi had blocked them, even though he was an incredible uh, sage in so many ways, um, a very powerful, powerful mind. Um, I'll get into greater detail, but Maharishi Mahesh Yogi was John the Baptist um, in, 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 in the... Um, biblical history. So, and he was a lot of other, uh, I'll, I'll talk about that when I get into that session with you later. But, my point is that as powerful a being as he was, this past lifetime, he chose to block his memories of his past lives, and his teacher opened them up to him again in, in between 2008 and now. Um, and so I'm just saying, I'm hypothesizing right now, Harpo. Who knows, your friend may have had somebody over there who may have helped him open up his memories, you know? Because I know that these friends who I'm going to tell you about um, at the appropriate session, in, in a few sessions, uh, who are on the other side, working, working the other side as I'm working this side, in terms of this, these fears and fear of death issues, um, are, do, are doing what they can to help open up people's memories when they get to the other side. Very interesting. Yep. Great comment. Great comment. Yeah, we're getting into some stuff, Harpo. I know you've sat in on all three sessions. We're getting into some stuff this session which we have not gotten into before, which is interesting. So, yeah. Well, I recommend anybody <laughs> watch this as much as you can. The other day I was pretty bummed out you know, I missed your last meditation class. So I just took out the time to watch it. I was elated afterwards. Absolutely elated. I'm not having any problems with meditating, but I watched it and I was elated. That's great. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're yeah. right. It's great. It's great. <laughs> well, there's a change in the vibration. We want to talk about vibration or whatever. Something happens. When I do these sessions and when I teach meditation, there is definitely a shift that occurs energetically, no doubt. Appreciate yeah. appreciate your mentioning that. Any other questions? Okay. Any other comments? Any other questions or comments? Anything else? Let me see. Did anybody text me anything? Oh, here's another one. Do you think... Do you think the physical circuitry we have with each other while alive on earth affects the deceased? 
Okay, so let me see if I can understand that. Do I think, do you think the physical circuitry we have with each other while alive on Earth affects the deceased? So, do you mean by that, is that does this question mean um, uh, while we are alive here and we have connection with somebody on the other side, is that what you mean? Do, do, are we affecting them in some way? Is that what you mean? Do you want to give me a little bit more? Can you hear me? Yes, can hear you. Yes, yes, yes. While we're, while we're in human bodies on this side, we have a physical connection with those that we're really close to. Yes. And that per, one person dies. Does our physical circuitry that we had with them affect that still go on and affect them on the other side when you say physical circuitry on this side can you give me a, an example of what that means be give me an example of what that means a physical circuitry let's say you were alive with me or somebody on this side and we knew each other what give me an example of the physical circuitry that was whatever I would say the, the sexual connection would be physical circuitry. Oh, sexual, yeah. So, so I would say this, that, and I've, and actually, I've written about this to some degree. I have, I have a, there's a blog piece you can find it on one of my websites. It's called Sex and Spirituality. Um, you can check that out. Um, I, I, I'm going to give you a very, very short version of that, which is. Um, sex is physical, okay? Sex is definitely a physical experience, it's a physical act, etc. That said, sex has a whole host of other levels of energetic connection, emotional connection, or not, with the other person. So it doesn't always happen. I'm saying, I'm talking about what are the possibilities. And so... Um, the, a connection with the person on the other side, you could have a sexual connection with them, but it wouldn't be physical. It would be a physical man. It be it would be manifested and transmitted. Obviously, not physically. It would be manifested and transmitted energetically. We say now, you could argue that energy is some very subtle, subtle, subtle form of physical. Uh, you know, physicality. Okay, I'll give you that if you want to go there, if from a from a very abstract theoretical level. Does that help? So, so the communication, the, com the, the the transmission, would be um, would be more energetic than obviously physical, because the other person is not in a physical body, right? Um, I've heard that we have. Um, it's not just about sex per se, but that we have a very physical um, connection to people who we're close to. I mean, like maybe our mother or even our father is a really strong physical connection between the bodies of oh. those two people. And when they one person dies, that circuitry has to be broken in order for them to leave, leave their body. No, the circuitry is no. not broken. The, cir the physical... If you're talking circuitry, you're talking energy. You're not talking physical. I mean, look at, look, just look at a mother. I mean, let me give you a sp specific example. Um, the mother and a daughter, mother and a son, mother and a baby, they are physically connected with the umbil umbilical cord. You cut the umbilical cord. That's the cut. That's a that's a cutting of the physical connection. Can you mute your uh, while you're, Chef, somebody, oh, that's. Harpo, hearts Harpo. Um, uh, when you when you physically cut the um, the umbilical cord, you've cut the physical connection, but the circuitry hasn't been cut. You know, the mother is uh, connect not physically connected to the baby, but there's a connection there, and that's what you're talking about the circuitry. So it's the it's no different when the physical body of a loved one dies and is on the other side, the umbilical cord between the two is cut, you could say, but the connection is still there. The circuitry is still there, but it's not physical, just like the umbilical cord is physical, but the connection between the mother and the child 
is not based on the fact that they are in that, that they're in physical bodies. They could be across the United States from each other and still have a circuitry connection. That happens with twins. You, you read about that with all the time, where they're physically on the other side of the planet from each other in physical bodies, but the circuitry is there. It's not about their physical bodies, right? So oh, when a person is deceased and you've got this strong physical connection, physical and emotional and circuitry, whatever you want to call it, yeah. connection to them, and then you're going through stuff here physically, wouldn't that affect them on the other side to some degree? Sure, absolutely, it could. Yeah, because it's affecting you, not just physically. The physical is affect because we are physical beings, emotional, mental beings, and we are connect it's all connected in us when we are in a physical body right it's it, 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 it the physical affects the emotional emotional affects the physical the you know the mental and so forth it's like a lot of things are we're organic beings and it's not you can't just um you know isolate the, all those different parts completely from each other although one may be more dominant at some times etc 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 but so sure but yeah you know somebody on the other side you're very connected with before they died Absolutely, they're gonna feel they can, they 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 can feel that um, the emotional pain you may have experienced if you're going through something physical, or the emotional enjoyment you're experiencing if you're going through something physical that's pleasurable. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. Does that answer your question? Um, yes, I'm just wondering if if I'm going through something physical that's negative. Yeah. Would that affect him negative? Would he be it, not be able to find his peace on the other side? It could affect him <laughs> negatively or it could affect him not negatively. It's totally up to him that you do not control anybody. Just like, just like when he was alive with you, sometimes you went through things that affected him more than other times. And sometimes you affect, he, he, you know, you went through things that didn't affect him so much. Maybe you wanted it to affect him more, and it didn't. All kinds of different permutations and variations on that. No different on the other side. That's another example of where, you know, the, one of these four principles that I laid out at the beginning. Less difference between here and there than we think. Yes, there's differences. We know the structural difference. And it's light, and, you know, no one has physical things and all that. But I'm talking about more of the mental experience there's much less difference on the other side than we realize and this is a good example of it right does that make sense yes thank yeah. you yeah absolutely great questions really good questions all of you have asked really make really good questions great points anything else anything else one not... thing yeah go ahead i would think that people on the other side would be more forgiving than people on this side. <laughs> like concerning, I don't know, anything from politics to sex. Don't you think that they would be more understanding <laughs> on the other side than they are on this side? They should be more enlightened, right? I, I would say, look. Yeah. Finish your thought. That, that was about it. Okay. I, I would say uh, not necessarily so, but maybe in some situations. So let me explain to you what I mean uh, by that. All right? That's the complete answer. Let me kind of explain what that means. Okay. All right. So, so you want to mute the phone? Mute that again? Excuse me. I got uh, Here, I'll mute quiet. you. Quiet. I got you. I, I just muted you. So, um, so here's the thing. Uh, I'll unmute you if you want to follow up on this after I give my answer. Um, so, here's the thing. From the perspective of somebody dying and going on the other side, if they are a self-aware human being on this side, like I said, they're, they're going over the other side with the same mind. So then they're going to be a self-aware mind on the other side. And I would just make a general statement to you, 
because, you know, self-aware, aware of themselves, thoughtful, that's what I mean when I say self-aware, kind of thoughtful, can think about things, can pause and reflect, people who are thoughtful in that way, and also thoughtful in terms of kind, thoughtful in that way too. Those types of people will go to the other side and kind of have a different perspective, a broader perspective perhaps on the other side, once they are less restricted because they don't have the physical body, they don't have to go to that job that's stressing them out and all that. So those people, I would say yes, Harpo, they, they, those people probably would be more forgiving. But let me ask you a question. It's a rhetorical question. But is everybody you know fall in, does everybody you know fall into that category of self-awareness I just described? No. Not everybody's that thoughtful and that kind and that self-aware and so forth. So what about those minds? And they go to the other side. They're taking their same mind, I'm telling you. T everybody, we're all taking our same mind. It's just that the body shuts off. Our mind continues. And I'm going to give you an example of the closest experience that I've had this lifetime to physically dying. I'm going to, I'm going to tell you about that experience in, in, in one of the sessions that, down, in, that's coming in the series down the road. But let me just say, uh, those people's minds are not changing all of a sudden. They don't become all of a sudden enlightened when they die. It's their same mind. And if they were, and if they were dumb and cruel and mean and unthoughtful, unthinking and un, you know, just not self-aware people on this side, then when they die, that's who they are on the other side. Okay. So that's why I answered it the way I did. Does that make sense? I, I unmuted you. Yeah. Yeah. Frightening, but <laughs> but it makes sense. Yeah, and it's that's why I said it's it's less difference between here and there than we think. But the big difference is back to one one of the questions that I can't remember if it was Susan or Shanna asked earlier. You can just leave if you run into people who are just bugging you and just like ah, I'm just I'm out of here because you know this is like. You know, when you and I were growing up, Harpo, together in Norwood, uh, this is like the Jetsons on steroids, you know, on the other side, you know? <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, right? I mean, it's just like, you know, you don't, you don't need the spaceship. You just, you're, you're, you are the spaceship. It's just like, okay, I'm out of here, boom, you know? I don't want to be with those people. Whatever. Uh, okay? Okay. Do you think you get a chance to, like, I always wanted to be... Buckminster Fuller. Do you have a chance, like you go to the other side, that you could? Say, I want to meet Buckminster Fuller and be there. You want to be with him and meet with him? Are you sure? Yeah, God, that would be great. Yeah, I'm sure. Seriously, <laughs> I'm sure. Look, I'll just give you a little window into some, one of my experiences that, that recurs regularly. Is I am on the other side and I'm going to lectures. So I'm sure he's over there doing that, and maybe I've sat into some of his in some of his lectures. Who knows? Uh, a lot of that going on. Not everybody does that. Some people don't want to do that, but that's me. You know, you guys kind of know my personality type. Right. I'm kind of like an I'm like an information sponge. So that, so you know, if I if I have all the time in the world, that's what I would do. Not, not <laughs> other people have all the time in the world. They ain't gonna be doing that. You know. Okay. Well, thanks. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Great question. Anything else? Any other questions before we call it an evening? Great discussion tonight. Really appreciate all the input. Okay. So, two weeks from tonight, February 14th, Valentine's Day. Uh, happy early Valentine's Day to everybody. Um, and uh, um, we're going to get into uh, uh, more discussion uh, about this, uh, um, uh, the uh, um, next session I think is on, uh, yeah, it's uh, the exact title, I can't remember, but basically what it is is, uh, what about, um, uh, can we get a glimpse of the other side? What about near-death experiences? What about out-of-body experiences? What about related experiences to either of those experiences? that are very common experiences that people have had. 
regularly in their lives that's very similar to getting a glimpse of the other side. Uh, what about those experiences? And what about um, missing loved ones? So it's Valentine's Day, so in the theme of Valentine's Day, I'm going to be talking about missing loved ones on the other side and so forth in our next session. What about getting glimpses in that respect? Okay, so um, as I said, I'll send you an email tomorrow uh, with a link to the recording here after I upload it uh, to YouTube. And uh, anybody has any follow-up questions you want to ask, just shoot me an email, okay? And uh, great to see everybody, and thanks for your participation. Have a good evening. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, good night. Take care.